All right. Good evening, everyone. And thank you for joining us on a Friday evening and taking the time out away from your family. We appreciate that. Um, we have a fantastic uh, presentation here uh, this evening. Uh, will be presented by uh, Ronald Page and Max Genty. Uh, we also have Mae Foley um, from, uh, and they're from Greater Miami Athletic uh, Conference. So we appreciate them uh, taking the time from their families and joining us and, and doing this for us as well. Um, just a few housekeeping items. Uh, the chat box and Q&A uh, box are open again this evening, like usual. Um, if you have questions throughout uh, the presentation, please feel free to ask. Uh, we will be answering them throughout. I'll stop every so often and ask the, the individuals, our clinicians presenting. Um, so we don't kind of, so, we, so we'll stay on topic as long as the questions are on topic. Um, uh, we plan to stay within an hour, uh, hour and five. If we do go over and, and you have to leave, please feel free uh, to, to do so. And, and we are recording this. So at any point um, after 24 hours, you will be able to go back and, and uh, view this presentation. Uh, we do post them on the FHSA Central Hub under the sports tab uh, and then click uh, the sport of volleyball. So without further ado, I will turn it over to uh, Ronald and Max and um, we can get started. Unmute yourself. Mute. Yes, welcome everybody. Um, like Jeremy said, if you got any questions, and uh, you can put them in the chat box and we'll answer them later or try to answer them alone. But we got 59 slides we got to try to get through, and we'll get through most of them. And, and we'll go from there. Next, the outline of this course here is game management, which is a very important part of our game. And for today, the introduction is going to be, uh, number one will be introduction. Number two, we'll go over the first impression and appearance. Number three, out of sight, out of mind. Number four, that gray, that gray spot come in again, Jim. Number four, it'll be common sense and is uncommon. Five, be nothing less than an exemplary referee. Number six, are you ready for prime time? Number seven, mental aspects of officiating suggested relaxation methods, number nine, working together, and number 10, on the job. Next. Oh, everything still ain't come in yet. It's still coming in, Jeremy. Number 11, which is preventive officiating. Number 12, pre-match responsibilities. Number 13, the role of a high school official, number 14, random casebook discussion, and number 15, miscellaneous topics, and then closing. Next slide. The first topic is out of sight, out of mind. Okay. First impressions and appearance. Next. Okay, we have out of sight and out of mind. My coining, uh, goodness, January of 1998. Not being remembered is the highest compliment you could receive for officiating a match. That means the teams and the player actions were featured. You did not draw any attention to yourself for the contested decision over, over these other recalls. You achieved the ultimate of being an invisible facilitator. Consider it a job well done. That means that, hey, you just there, don't nobody even know you're there. The players are there and that's who they came to see. Next. You have a match objectives. Each team is there for the spirit of the competition and to win the match. The spectators are there for the enjoyment of the athletic competition. Neither team nor spectators are there to watch the officials perform. And you are there as an official to quietly conduct the match in accordance with the rules. <laughs> you are applying the rules. Every official is required to know the rules. 
Finally, this knowledge proves disruptive and alienates the coaches and players. Instead of strictly enforcing the rule book, understand the rules are intended for guidelines. Learn when it is appropriate and necessary to apply them. First and foremost, use common sense and take preventive measures. Interrupting play. As volleyball, as volleyball continues to evolve, the players are being taxed more than keeping the ball in play and sustain rallies for viewing interest and excitement. Be aware of this and use your leverage as an official to help support, to help the sport develop. Let the player's athletic performance decide the outcome of each rally. Work at being a non-factor in the outcome of interfering the flow of action as little as possible. In essence, let, let them play without overlooking gross infractions. Going unnoticed, like they said, you, you out of sight, out of mind. The smooth, silent operation of a match is an excellent barometer of the job you did. Be a low profile, even handed arbor, uh, arbor. Leave the limelight to the teams and the players act, playing action. If you do not always succeed in this idea, make sure it's for doing something right. Socializing with the team, showboating, and court chatting fall into the latter category. And officials efficiently run the show with limited intrusions is a, is a competent, understanding facilitator who supports the players and their athleticism in being the main attraction of a match. Stay out of sight and out of mind are worthy professional goals when officiating any match. This is something that we all should be doing, like they said. When you walk in and you do what you're supposed to do, most of the things that you're not even seeing. Can, can we mute everybody, Jeremy? Next slide. Okay, go ahead, Max. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. So this is Max Gentil. Uh, I'm supporting uh, Ron uh, in uh, presenting this to you. This is very, very, very good, uh, important information. Uh, so we have the five, fifth, fifth slide here. We're talking about uh, how common sense is really uncommon. I already saw the, the comment from someone that <laughs> that is so true, right? Uh, Go ahead, Jeremy, go to the next slide. <clears throat> so talking about common sense, remember the sport is about the players and the coaches. We do a service, we provide a service like any business, the customer comes first. The rules won't deal, of every, uh, won't deal with every possibility. They are there. You better know the rules as well as you can. And using the words of the of the, the language that you have in the rule book, uh, which is how you communicate with the coaches, you know, that's uh, that's that's what you gotta use. Do no, you don't want to break the rules, but they certainly can be bent to suit the situation. Okay. <clears throat> Think our biggest aid is our head, not the rule book, because we, like one mentioned before, we are not policing the game. We are facilitating the game. Uh, a rule stickler dictates rather than facilitate. Is that the approach for the most effective official? Uh, do not waste our logical minds. If an alternative fulfills a rule's intent and spirit, but not the, its exact terms, the chosen alternative is almost always the right one. So uh, think about this, for example, like we, we have double contacts. It's pretty well defined in the book what a double contact is. And as you are referring the game, there are some double contacts that are that you have to, to whistle for sure when they when they are going toward the, the the adversary and it's an attack. Okay, there are some doubles that are borderline that because it is a, it is set to another teammate, it doesn't affect really uh, the the play. So use common sense. 
uh, rules or guidelines, common sense takes precedence. Okay. So going to the next slide. So we have a variety of referees on the on the panel right now. So remember, the veterans know this, right? And all the newcomers are gonna be good at this. Anyone can become a great, a good referee, right? Becoming a great referee is a lot tougher. There is one fundamental difference between a good referee and a great referee. A good referee knows the game and is technically start sound. A great referee understands the game and the expectation and responsibilities that come with the position, which means you are a facilitator, a facilitator again, okay? Uh, there are some situations that requires you to be to use some of the uh, the wisdom that you have acquired throughout your life, you know, to 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 your fate, all that that you should you need to use while you're refing that game. That's what we're talking about. Blow blow your whistle to initiate play, then try not to be involved in the game. Okay, stay out of the way. There will be times when a violation must be whistled to stop play. If unsure, let the play flow toward normal conclusion. Don't interject yourself into the match with a call from out of the blue that is inconsistent with your previous call or kills a rally. The key thing here as referees, we, we want to portray that, un, un, uh, that neutrality. We want to be unbiased, and that's, that's what we're looking for. Uh, go without notice and don't influence the match, right? Another area of officiating distinction is dealing with coaches and players. Remember, the match is about them. Treat coaches and players as your equals and with total respect and courtesy, okay? All of the matches for their enjoyment and fulfillment, which you must permit, set limits on the behavior that, on the behaviors that are acceptable and unacceptable. Let the coaches coach, don't interfere with the business. If they start coaching you, then draw the line nicely, sometimes a little more uh, more vehement, okay? A little more tough, a little more tough, but remember, the service is for them, not for you. All right. All right, I'll do this one slide and then I'll pass, you, I'll pass it on uh, to, to Ron. Okay, the last thing I wanna talk about in this, uh, in this wave, a great referee knows image is everything. Image starts as early as you, as, as they, they see you getting in the school, in the school, okay? How you look. Uh, I, know, I know, for example, I've worked with Ron. His car is, is perfectly clean, you know? That's, that shows something about, about the cleanliness of how you should be doing the game, okay? It starts from there. And then as you do this, as soon as you get in the gym, uh, it's clear you already talked to your partner, you know, who you, I'm tall, you can, you're short, you're going to take care of the balls, I'm tall, I'm going to take care of the nets. All that shows how you're responsible for the game and how you're going to, how you're going to blow the whistle in a way that uh, the coach and the players and the spectators are going to be satisfied, okay? Doing your duties isn't enough. Be a willing team player. Acting civil isn't enough. Be dignified. Being on time is not enough. Be early. Uh, making the right call is not enough. Be beyond reproach in judgment, okay? Confidence in your decision is not enough. Project poise. Correct signal mechanics are, are not enough. Be crisp and polished in their display. Because when you do, so exa for example, something as, uh, as solid as your mechanics, uh, they, everyone can see that you take the game seriously and that you're about to give them a great show, okay? You're helping the show to be uh, presented in, a, in the right way. Perception is reality. Good, better, best, never let it rest until your good is better and your better is best. Be the best that you can be. And when you be the best that you can be, that doesn't mean that you're gonna be performing at the highest level every match, but you know with all the tools that you have at that particular time in the game, that was your best that you gave and you did not cheat any one of that. All right, Juan, you go next. Are you ready for prime time? And it's just like Max was telling you, I usually scout both teams before I come into the gym. I don't, before I go, I look at what two teams is playing. I look up in the newspaper, I see what's their record. 
and what kind of game is I'm going to have to manage that game. And I already know who the coaches are. So, you know, like they said, if you come in there, dress the part, hey, everything will be much easier for you. Anyone with a general idea of the sport and a knowledge of the rules can blow a whistle and claim to be a volleyball referee. Upper echelon referees have to do better, much better. The following assessments will give an aspiring referee a good gauge of being ready to move up the ladder. Next slide. Can you cite chapter and verse of every rule? Do you do your common sense and spirit of the rule prevail over going by the book? Everybody's not going to know everything in the book. Most of the, some some referees go above and beyond. Most of the time, if I when I start quoting the rules out of the book, if you quote two or three rules out of the book and tell the coach, "Hey, go to rule five four number two, they're not going to bother you anymore because they're going to say you already in the rule book and know what you're doing. Do you know the game? Are you familiar with every current player technique and skills? Can you explain today's defensive and offensive team strategies and alignment? When I walk into the gym and I get there early, I'm walking out watching their setters, watching their servers and seeing what kind of game I'm gonna to have to uh, officiate. Are you really professional? Do you know the causes, conflict of interest and wrong perceptions? Can you be relied upon to do the right things? Do you treat everyone with respect and courtesy? Always retreat all players. I always call the players Mr. Mrs. by their name. I treat everybody with respect. You got to give respect to, to deserve respect. Do you converse with do you converse with coaches and players only on matters pertaining to the conduct of the match? I don't. If I walk in and shake one coach hand, I go down and shake the other coach hand. Are you an ambassador of the organization and our profession and not a member? Next slide. Are you ready for prime time? Are you punctual? Like Max say, always be on time. Most of the time what I'm doing is like, I like to get there early so we can, so if, if not, when my partner walk in, hey, did you scout the team? No, nope. okay, then if not, let's talk about what we gotta go over right quick. We get upstairs and watch it, and we all understand what we're gonna have to go through during that match. Always be on time. If you're not on time, make sure you call your partner to let them know where you at. Do you show up at courtside prepared for your matches by the report time? Do you have a commanding presence that sells your calls? Are you signaling not only mechanically correct, but also strong and crisp? Is your whistle prompt and authoritative in sound? Do you project a dignified, I know what I'm doing, body language that's not overbearing? Are you a facilitator and not a rule dictator? Are you a battle tester or are you a court wise? Are you at ease officiating the highest competition level or do you act by instinct and reflex instead of thinking about it? Like they said, when you get into those high contests, I don't care, I've done regional, championships, I've done state championship. Every time I step on that court, it, hey, I have to get used to, even though I've done many games, I got to get used to the crowd when I'm there. Once I get first couple of volleys across, I'm ready to go and it's just like regular. Next slide. Ron, before we move on, we have a question here real quick. Um, how can you come into a match uh, as an unbiased official when you scope out the teams ahead of time. Can you kind of just go through that a little bit um, yeah. from uh, your uh, uh, previous slide about watching uh, the teams beforehand? Yes, because you have to go in like neutral, even though I have already went in and I have scouted both teams because when you scout both teams, it makes your game much easier because you know how the game is going to be called. Because one of the teams you might look at, you know the team is not going to even – be up to par playing this team. So it's got to be evenly matched. You got to call the game on what you have on the court there. So I walk into every game and say every game is different and I look at the game and it's for the players. I'm not going to let anyone, if they're overmatched, we're not going to let the other the other players be um, like ashamed the other team. So when I walk in, 
even though I've already scouted the teams, I'm just going to go by the rules and call the game like it's supposed to be called. That's how, even though I went and scouted both teams, scouting both of those teams tells me how I'm going to call that match. So I can I can add for run also on that subject. Can you guys hear me, Paul? Good. You're good. Okay. So I can add from uh, what Ron is saying. It's uh, it's you're doing the scouting not to be biased on bias. You're doing it as your due diligence to know uh, what you're gonna see. Just like them playing the sport, anticipation. Anticipation is what uh, is is what refereeing is is about. The, so when you do that scouting, it allows you to, to know more or less whether that setter has a tendency to double on a certain type of balls. Not that you're going to call it, but you're ready for it when it happens. Also, Jeremy, how it looks like we was telling you before, your presence. When you walk into the gym, the coach already know what type of referee you are. They've already seen you officiate. And they know when you walk into the gym, they hey, we're not gonna, we're not, they're not gonna have that today. So Do you, you don't even. Would you, would you two walk. consider that a part of your responsibility during warm up, warm ups as well? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. That's what prepares you for the game, in a, a so so that you don't have any 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 uh, any what what I what I may call uh, any what's the word I'm looking for? Any surprises? Okay. This is to eliminate surprises so that uh, you have, for the veterans, they've seen almost everything and still uh, they can still be surprised. Okay, for the newcomers, it's for them to be ahead of what's expected. Okay, so that uh, uh, if uh, something comes up, they were already aware that it could happen so that they can anticipate and know, know what they're gonna whistle. You know, they don't have to whistle immediately again, like I said, you have all the information you need to make the best decision for the for the for the for the players and the coaches. And one last thing on that, Jeremy, when you walk in the gym, as soon as you come in the gym and you go to measuring the nets, taking the air gauge of the ball, seeing what the ball measurement, they know you know what you're doing. Half, and I could tell you this, I've been a president for seven, eight years. Some of the people, they come in the gym and they, you ask them, did they measure the net? After the first camp match is over with, with the JV, you got to come back in and remeasure that net when you come in. You ask uh, some of the JV officials that are going out, the young officials, what's the air pressure on the ball? I always asking questions. That's how I learned. Did we answer that question, Jeremy? Yes, sir. Very good. We can uh, move forward. Uh, it says, uh, is your ball handling judgment correct? Are you comfortable with your standards? It is consistent throughout a match. You got to be consistent throughout the match. Have you have you officiated innumerable matches that tell in, uh, instantly between an ugly or weird but legal set and a pretty but illegal set? Are you uh, catching all violations beside the ball handling violations? Some of them, if they ask you and you didn't see it, the best thing to do is say, coach, I didn't, if they ask the question of the captain come over, I didn't see that, I'll keep an eye on it. As long as you, they, hey, so you done already put them on point where we don't sit back, I know he's seen that. Are you invisible? Are you error few and far between and not the same ones as before? Are you approachable, explain calls? Always be approachable, let them come over let them talk to you, but don't let them get out of hand to keep asking you those questions over and over again. You got to learn, hey, I, I understand, I see that, but the game must keep flowing. I can see the calls. I know what I'm making. Are these talks short and sweet, which they should be? Do you think fast and uh, placate the difference between common questions that may be asked? Do you cut off ongoing conversations? Do you do it with tact? and finality. Just listen to them. Two ears, one mouth. Always listen and then answer. Next slide. Do you take preventive control measurements? Do you recognize the difference between venting or frustration and abusive behavior? Do you do you match rarely get does your does your match rarely get out of hand? Never let your match get out of hand. Because when someone is up and your match get out of hand, now the fans start to get into it. Then you start questioning yourself. If they ever do 
do you regain control? A good way to regain control like I do in college softball, that play is gone. Don't try to look back on that play. Don't come back to it. That play is gone because if you keep thinking about that, that's going to mess the rest of your game up. So if you did make a mistake, tell yourself, I made a mistake. I, can't, I, hey, I won't let that happen again and keep moving on. Can you do it without sanctioning cards? I try not to give cards. I don't give cards. Players and coaches earn those cards when they get them. Are you a team player and communicator and not a lone ranger? Do you coordinate duties with your R1 and R2? I let the R2 do their job. Most people think that the R1 is the hardest job. The R2 is the hardest job on the floor. That is the hardest job that out there when you're doing it. R2, R1 is the easiest job on the court. And line judges, before the match, I make sure whoever has that responsibility during the line judge, tell them what their duties are, make sure if they're out of alignment. And when they come over between the match, just tell them, hey, can you please move over just a little bit? I tell every line judge, hey, you just started out with an A plus. Come on, we're going. And I try to pep them up. Let's keep the A plus through the whole game. Two is have, have them do their job, solicit their input. With eye contact throughout the match, do you treat them plus the scorekeeper as equal? Yes, I do, because all of us are a team. As R1 and R2, do you know all the places to look and what to look for before serve, during a rally, at the end of play, during warm up before the start of the game, and are you seeing and not just glancing? You up, Max. So continue on on the same uh, readiness. <clears throat> so rotational rotational position for players is a is a is a very big uh, area. So get ready for them. Uh, try to learn about them. If you don't know, ask ask a veteran official how what 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 he uses to uh, to uh, uh, help him get those right those right. Can you track player rotation and quickly detect and overlap no matter what formation the teams are in. There are some uh, videos right now that FHSA has on. They are pretty good. I already went through them. They will help you. Do you keep your matches moving at a lively pace, pace regardless of playing caliber? Have you stopped from causing match delays? This is so important. The flow of the match, uh, de depending on the level you're doing, is be becomes very important as you uh, as you ref uh, different level uh, teams. So. Sometimes when you don't go in the game and go with the flow, you delay the, the action. You delay the action and the coach can sense that and they get uh, uh, a little, uh, a little uh, sometimes annoyed by the way uh, you are being distracted a little bit. Do you continue to learn and grow? Do you accept criticism without having to defend or explain yourself? Are you listening and not just hearing? Do you implement suggestion and advice right away and not get messed up? A good thing that you guys can do, even at the veteran stage, there are some things that you're not good at. So every match, go with the intent of getting better at the one thing. Okay, say, okay, this time I'm gonna I'm I'm, <clears throat> I'm gonna work on uh, making sure, for example, that uh, uh, the setter uh, when the setter comes in, I can I can detect ways that is it she back with player. You can work on that uh, 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 work on that on uh, one match. The next match you work on something else. Volleyball is a fast paced game. Uh, you can go to the next slide, really. <clears throat> Volleyball is really a fast paced game in a relatively small arena, with you the high school official in an established position. You may have to make five or six decisions in just one action of blocking and attacking. You may also be the target of undisciplined crowds and excited participants. So when we're talking about this, what, what, what's, what's important to get is how are you preparing yourself to be the best referee you can be? Uh, resting, I make sure when I have a game, I go to bed, make sure I get my eight hours. I know I don't function well on four, five, six hours. So I make sure I go to bed, you know, and I make sure I respect uh, that game and making sure that I give uh, the participant the best that I can for myself. And it starts with resting. Uh, 
Is it not enough? It's not enough to just know the rules and mechanics of officiating. You must have the intellectual skills to manage stress. Okay, officiating volleyball always requires more mental energy and stress than physical energy. So be, be cognizant of that, be aware of these things. The level of, of officiating has little to do with the amount of stress, okay? There is some level of stress in every match. Every match is different. There's always gonna be something that uh, you haven't seen in a previous match. So what you do is you try to be as consistent as you can be, as mechanically sound as you can be throughout every match is so that uh, you eliminate uh, some of these little uh, little mishaps that can happen. That's what you do, and that's uh, that's that's basically uh, what happens from matches to matches as you 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 gain more years in the in 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 in, uh, in uh, being a referee. So you're able to do certain things and not be be surprised by certain situation. Uh, if you <clears throat> Physical symptoms such as headache, shortness of breath, tiredness, and the tightening of muscles can happen. Emotional symptoms caused by anticipated loss of, co of control of the match. Fear of inadequate preparation, fear of failure, general intimidation. Anxiety can reduce your, concentra your concentration and diminish decision-making ability. So what you do is you want to put yourself in the situation uh, as quickly as you can so that uh, when you're in there, you're like, oh, deja vu, I've been there before. And one big thing also, as, as you referee and you continue on on that, uh, on that path, try to uh, in, indulge yourself with whatever volleyball that you can pick up. On YouTube, there's all kinds of levels of volleyball. Watch how these referees handle situation, okay? That helps. Uh, <clears throat> so <clears throat> I hope I'm not talking too fast, but uh, uh, that's, your, that's just excitement, so. The official's fear of failure is usually based in his or her lack of confidence, of self-confidence, okay? Constant evaluation and criticism by coaches, players, and fans are challenges to the official spirit and self-worth. So how do you go, uh, how do you not worry about that? Preparation, okay? You, you, know, your, you, know, you know your rules, okay? You, 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 you watch the situations, okay? You don't get yourself involved in the game. That's how you. That's how you. You get better. Official achievements go relatively unnoticed, while mistakes and failure are noticed, examined, and criticized. I can tell you how many times I've had one coach uh, uh, saying the best thing about you. All of a sudden, you make one call that is not going the way in that they feel that should have been a certain way, and you're the worst referee ever. Okay. So you gotta be cognizant of these things and try to always be neutral and unbiased. The fear of inadequacy of inadequacy is based on a perceived lack of ability or failure to sufficiently prepare for the match. Properly preparing to work a match is most often directly related to the smooth flow of game management, as we've been talking about. A game management starts with making that calls in the morning and say, okay, we got a game at five. I'm gonna be, I might be late, but I'm gonna try to make it. So you can start pregame conference for me. Okay, that's how it goes. Uh, checking the equipment, orienting the other members of the officiating crew, watching the warm up periods, reviewing lineups, establishing ground rules, all help the overall stress level of the match. Okay, all these things that you're doing, that's what's gonna help you have a best match possible. Okay, so I'll do that last slide and then one will take over. A perceived loss of control is probably the most prevalent cause of anxiety. Okay, you don't want to lose control of your match. You have means for that. You have cards. It has to be progressive. Your warnings can be used any time of the day, any time of the match. Okay, you can use your warnings and kids listen. Okay, they are very respectful for most, for most, for most parts. Uh, and they know when they have not done the right thing. So, there are some situations that require a card, but not necessarily a card in because you know once you've used that card, the next step is going to be a red card. And that's, penal that's a big penalty because there's going to be a loss of rally point. So use your common sense. The feeling that your action have a direct influence over the participant and the outcome of the match is a powerful emotion. Officials can and should control their personal behav behaviors and actions in all situations. Remember, you're not policing. You facilitate it. Performing in a professional, positive manner helps dilute potential problems. So again, rest enough and do your best. Go ahead, Ron. Next slide. Suggested relaxation method. This do really helps 
You just got to practice it before you start. Before all games, I try to get there, get my body relaxed, and I try to just do some breathing exercises before I go in, no matter what, because you don't know what's going to happen at that facility that day. Recall the positive officiating experience. Recall and recapture your feelings when you were officiating well. Keep a diary of your officiating experience. Write and develop your experiences. Role play. Use mental imaginary to help you prepare for the tough matches. Picture situations that may occur and how you might handle them. And just to go back what they're saying, just because you had a problem with this coach earlier in the year, every game is different. Walk back in that gym like he's a brand new coach. Even though you know you might have a problem, they just walk back in the gym like it's a new coach. Role play, use mental imaginary to help you prepare for tough matches. Picture situations might occur and how you might handle them. You can talk to yourself, hey, don't let it get out of hand. Negative thoughts should be eliminated. If the game gets stressful, breathing slowly and deliberately relax your neck and shoulder muscles. Maybe mental, sing a small tune and relax, your, relax you. My personal favorite is Great Balls of Fire. And it does get like that. I was in a, I was in a state semifinal game, and I couldn't wait for that game to be over. With. It went five matches, and it was, it was all the way down to the last match, point for point. And we went almost to 25 every every game, and then we went to 15 the last set. But that game was very. I just had to keep relaxing up there on the stand. Suggested relaxation methods. Relax various muscles in your body, one after another, your toes, your feet, your legs, your hands. Smile, grin, and even giggle when you feel tension coming on. Vocalize to yourself your words like wind, soft, rain, relax. Rub your arms to remind you to clear your mind. Center on the action and don't let yourself become distracted. Don't let yourself become distracted when you're up there. Slow down and take your time when you're under stress. Relax and enjoy your work. Keep the value of officiating in context. Working together. In his book, Modern Sports Officiating, Bill Thompson states, building sound relationship with fellow officials, players and coaches and spectators while under the fire of intense Athletic robbery calls for an artist's touch. Often little thoughts is given to your relationship with your partner. Out there, you and your partner is the only aid. That's your team. That's your team you're working with. It is especially important to get to know each other prior to the contest, even if you haven't worked together before. When you first meet in the locker room or in the car ride, don't start blowing smoke about all the big games you worked or about how you've been scouted for college officiating. I look at every game, every game to me, no matter who's playing out there, is the same. Even though they're different, every athlete out there, you should show them all respect because, hey, I don't care how good the teams are, they might be doing their best. Working together, the best approach is to sit back, relax, and let the others officiate official enter into the conversation. If you are much, if you are much the junior official, pay a bit of respect to your partner. Sure, he might look a little punchy and his pants are short, but don't ever forget that summer sign of maker probably put him on the game to steady up to steady your nerves. In addition, he almost most likely works in up tough games in the season that you have in your entire career. And mostly, if you're working with a junior official, I don't care who it is, I always ask, no matter how, did you see anything that I do wrong in that match? Because they might give me something. You can't see things that you do wrong. Did you see anything that I do wrong? And then I'll ask them, you got any questions about what you did? Uh, do you have anything to ask about this game when I'm working with junior officials? And I always work on a couple of things at a time. Working together, post-match. This area is often overlooked, but it's sometimes the most beneficial learning tool available. 
discuss key points, pivotal plays in the match, use and accept constructive criticism, take mental notes for review to associate meetings with supervisor and more experienced officials. Learn from every match, post-match. Don't just run out of the game. Hey, you, if you, if you can talk about your post game when you're going to the car. Some officials I work with, they just go, hey, as soon as the game over, you don't see them no more. It's like the gym done blowed up and they, hey, they got to get out of there. Next. You are Max. So in this, uh, this section, we're going to talk about uh, how you, as a referee, you are, an, you are really an artist. Uh, so what I'm saying is the diversity of human athletic endeavors uh, boggles the mind. There can be no set of written rules which completely govern a sporting contest. Human activity necessitates human judgments as to what is permissible. And to you, the artist, the official as artist is the one who took the gray areas of question and paints and paints them decisively black or white while making the interested parties buy the painting with little dialogue. He sells that painting by this very present and obvious comment of the situation. So we talked about partnership, right? So as an R2, uh, you always have the back of your R1 and you back him up no matter what, because that's the only friends you have, really that crew that, 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 that officiating that game. You don't say, I don't know why he called this, you know? So you say from his viewpoint, uh, which is a better view than, than what I had, uh, that's what he called and uh, we move for, we're moving forward, okay? Things like that. You don't say, ah, oh, that was a horrible call. <laughs> you know, you have to back up your back up your partner. How can some officials do this while others will have to babble on about the technical merits of the work? The artists recognize what the game and the participant are intended to do. You need to have considered just what the game is about. Okay, you have to exhibit some savvy about the game. You are not being hired to be officious, overbearing, authoritarian, or a tough guy. Right? You're being hired to enforce the rules tempered with reason, okay? <clears throat> you should be a reasonable person when officiating. You should be approachable, right? So you, you can smile, you know, but not too much. You have to be approachable, okay? Uh, when, a, when the testy situation arises, quickly ask yourself, how would you handle it out on the street? Develop techniques to achieve your goal without having to invoke to invoke your total dominance, okay? So as, they are, as an artist, the artist knows how to deal with the many minor irritants that crop up in every game. The top-notch officials smoothly get their jobs done. They keep things under control more often than not, okay? Like uh, we started uh, this presentation. If after a game they don't remember who the referee was, perfect game you, you've blown, okay? If they remember that you caused some tumultuous activities in the game, they will remember you forever. Again, when you come back to that to that, to that gym uh, to, uh, later on in the in the year, nothing ever happened. Okay, it's a new game. You learn from that. They learn from that, and you move forward. You give them your best. The great official seems to be able to talk players and coaches into being more reasonable. They don't get ruffled red in the face, nervous, or lose their temper. One thing that uh, I uh, want to uh, emphasize with you guys is uh, remove the emotion when you have to penalize with cards, okay? Be cool. You know the reason why, uh, why, you call, why, why you're gonna, you, you're gonna, you're gonna penalize uh, the, the player or the coach, okay? It's an unsportsmanlike conduct. Okay, very coolly, call the captain over. You call the captain over, okay. Uh, your coach is receiving this card because it's been, uh, well, in my judgment, it was, it was, he displayed some, uh, some uh, 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 unsportsmanlike behaviors. That's final. So be cool about that. Learn to be cool when you're presenting those, uh, those penalties. The artist, all the way, uh, all the while knowing the rule, concerned himself with psychology, <coughs> excuse me, psychological aspect of the occurrence, okay? You have to manage. For example, this is the end of the game, 24, 26. Uh, uh, to, 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 game is about to be ended. Uh, the player goes and hit the ball in the net and he grabbed the ball and throw it down. 
protect them for a minute. Okay, you can you can give the cup the player a stare down. You know the situation. You know what's happening. He's frustrated that he didn't put the ball down and he lets his team that he, he lets his team down. So be cognizant of that and say, hmm, does he deserve a card for this? Ah, 26, 24, game over. We let that one slide. We understand. Okay, things like that. Uh, <clears throat> So the audience, all the while knowing the rule, concern himself with psychology, psychological aspect of the occurrence. He thinks, how can I get this guy back into the box and still hold his respect? He realizes that since he carries the final authority in the matter, he may as well try to work it out and reserve the, ha the hammer for when it is absolutely necessary. All right, okay, Ron, we're gonna go to preventing officiating. Go ahead. Okay, preventing officiating. During the team warm-ups, view skill level, looking for the father. We went over that prior to. Setter's hands, are they legal? Setter's height and vertical. Is she capable of a back row attack? For the barrel height and vertical, is she capable of an above net contact and violation? Also, look closely for illegal equipment and uniforms, including, you should be doing this during the pregame. Jewelry, cabaret, pop culture cre uh, creations. Make wise use of pregame's observation time, prove invaluable in the smooth operation of the subsequent match. The referee pre-match. Pre we're just repeating ourselves again, but still we're going through the referee's pre-match. Be in uniform at the site of the match, no less than 30 minutes prior to the start of the time. Examine the game ball to make sure it meets the rules, specifications, and make the final decisions on the game ball to be used. Inspect the court, markings, net support, referee stand, and other equipment. Measure net height. Establish non-playable areas and define any additional ground rules which might be necessary. Designate the official score, assistant score, timer, and line judge. Review specific duties with the umpire and line judges. You assign the line judges to their positions, call a captain and head coach from each team together for a pregame match conference, check players for open wounds, bleeding or excessive blood on uniforms, verify with each head coach that all players are wearing legal uniforms and equipment. When you see legal uniforms, they still gonna play the game. You just have to write the state and let them know that they're, hey, they have illegal uniforms. We still gonna play the game. During the pregame match conference, conduct the coin toss between the head coaches and uh, captains to determine which team shall have choice of serving or receiving for the first game. And form score which team will serve first. Be in uniform, oh, okay, crew pre-match. Okay, we're at the umpire, umpire pre-match. He got to still be there 30 minutes prior to, like both of us should sign up. Assist the referee in pre-match duties and supervise placement of the officials, tables, and team benches. Review specific duties and responsibilities with the score, assistant score, and timer, and verify the lineups have been entered correctly on the official score sheet. The crew pre-match, arrive at the site 30 minutes, introductions to all team coaches, check the game balls, inspect court equipment, marking, net measurement, uh, measure, measurement nets, establish non-playing areas and ground rules, designate score, time and line judge, review duties with the umpire line judge, check for open wounds, bleeding, captain's meeting, 20 minutes, introduction, introductions of officiating crew, jury, water, ground rules, warm-up protocols, uh, Matt format input from him, umpire questions going toss. Good luck. Always ask the coach, do they have, you know, any kind of special introduction that they're going to be doing for that game? If they, if they have any special pre-match duties, are they going to do it? Some introductions. Warm up begins 15 minutes, 771. Observe skill level, ensure safety during shared time. Check the rosters with the players on the court. Then your introductions, national anthems. Officials take positions, referee signals teams onto the court, umpire checks lineup, 
Umpire identifies back row. Referee can scan the court for a readiness and play begins. Also, make sure you always get there start on time. I always start on time. I always make sure I, I get there start on time because you don't want to start late. Real quick, Ron, um, yes. there's a question that popped up. Uh, when you refer to the umpire, is that the same as the R2? That's the R2. Yeah, I, I think it was a typo. It's, it's the R2. That's correct. Well, do we do we want to go with the uh, with the? Uh... I'm gonna tell you this right here. We'll go over one, mm -hmm. and what we're gonna uh, once we get through with this situation, because you can uh, you can look on the site. It's gonna be up there just to save us some more time. Yeah, it says referee's responsibility. It says situation A. We're gonna have a lot of situations here, but this will help you out. But we will once we go over this one. We're gonna have Jerry skip over all of the situations you can go back and look over. Situation A, the coach of the visiting team, which has no extra players or team attendance to act as a line judge, suggests that the match be conducted without line judges. The ruling, incorrect procedure. Two line judges shall be used with the host management providing both. We do get this situation a lot when we get to the gyms and uh, you know, and uh, more, more, often, more often than not, uh, the visiting team is more willing to use one, but it's the responsibility of the host home team, home team to provide. You want you want me to skip forward to the next ones, Ron? Yeah, you can go on ahead and skip. You can skip over the responsibility. This will be hip is to make sure that if they want to go back to the site and look at this. They can look at it because it has all those situations in it because we're kind of on time restrictions now. And I don't want to try to hold everybody up on a Friday night. Because Perfect. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing. There are a couple of questions. So as I skip through and get to the correct spot, we can answer those questions. Yes, sir. Okay. The first question, do you use a running clock or break it down for each team? I believe he's referring to the 771 seven, seven, uh, warm-ups. I look at mostly we look at I look when I come in 771, you want to start the little, you want to call your captains together that do it by 15, 20 minutes prior to, and you want to try to start between 17 minutes before. Because you always want to stay on time because everybody's always lagging around and you're not going to have that time to start on time. I pay attention to 771. So yes, we look at the main clock up there. When I tell them to start that 15 minutes, hey, once we get through with the pregame, okay, we point over, hey, go ahead and start the 15 minutes. Then they, the uh, visiting team come on with their seven, then we do the seven and everybody comes off the court and then we get ready to start the game. Correct. Perfect. Rose of a high school volleyball official, really a lot of people come into the high school and they do other levels of volleyball and other levels of sports. I was always taught. I've worked all the way in the professional level at other sports. I'm working college level. They always told me, whatever sport you're doing, turn off and turn on whatever sport you're doing. Do not playing college rules into high school. Do not Hey, so you got to know what you're doing. Turn that light on for whatever sport. If you're doing high school, go by high school rules. That's all we're doing here is going by high school rules in volleyball. So it says the roles of a high school volleyball official. As a high school volleyball official, your primary responsibility is to ensure equal opportunity and fair play for all participants. You control the tone of the match by demonstrating an impartial attitude and making decisions that are free from bias and within the spirit and intent of the rules. Volleyball is unique in that it requires you to judge the skills and techniques of players each time they come 
contact the ball, making your job extremely critical in regards of conducting the match. In other sports, officials do not always make the same kinds of decisions. Every time a player touches the volleyball, you must decide whether or not the playing action is legal. Was the ball held too long? Was it in contact more than once? Your judgment comes even more challenging when you officiate players who have not yet mastered their skills. And again, you have to call the game at the level of play. You can't call everything when you don't have two skilled teams. You Some things you have to let go or you're going to be there all night. Then you have to adjust your standards to broadening your definition of legal contact with all the decisions you have to make. As a volleyball official, you must be careful not to let your role dominate the match. After all, sports is for the players, not the officials. Because you determine the legality of each and every contact with the ball, you must be consistent in applying the standards that you establish. Your decision has to be based on the same criteria, regardless which team or player contacts the ball or what skill is used during the contact. These judgments are your biggest challenges, but they are critical to assuring that every participant has an equal opportunity to win or lose. Try to remember your primary responsibility to provide an environment for fair and safe play. View yourself as a facilitator, not as an enforcer. Start by assuming that the participants the participants are doing things legally rather than looking for reasons to blow your whistle and call violations. Keep yourself in the background until your judgment is needed. And if you, if you make sure that everyone is treated equal and fairly, you have done your job as an official. Max? So do we, we are about to wrap up, guys, and I hope we can answer many, as many questions as possible. So we moving forward, you only get one chance to make a first impression. So really, it's about being consistent, whether it's in the way you approach the game when you're coming to a gym or the way you actually blow your whistle on the place. You have to be consistent. And when you display consistency, you get the most respect you can possibly have. If you don't look like a pro, you certainly won't be perceived as a pro. Make sure you don't give them ammunition other than your game performance. That's all you're there for. Be unbiased. If only officials were like elephants, or to have the memory of an elephant. It's easy to destroy the impression of alertness when you forget essential equipment. Lay out equipment days, equipment days ahead of time and pack it the same way each time. Consistency. Have a checklist. Three or four checks of your bag is acceptable. If you're driving, pack two of everything as it gives, as it gives you a backup and also comes in, it comes in handy when your partners experience their own lapses in memory. Watch your body language. If you look bored up there, they, that, that will be picked up. If your hands are lazy in terms of uh, pointing who, who just won the rally, that will be picked up and that shows a certain level of either laziness or not, inter not interested. You want to have the proper body language. How to carry yourself says more about you than anything you can say verbally. How do you think people would, re would react to an official who stands with a slouch and keeps his head down avoiding eye contact when he arrives. That official won't be seen as someone who can get the job done. Right there, you already lost credibility. What about the official who arrives and stands with his arm crossed as he glares intensely at anyone who looks his way? That official appears confronta confrontational. You don't want to be confrontational. You want to be uh, welcoming. You want to be uh, there so people know you're here to serve, OK? Again, a lot of time I've, from uh, the few years I've had uh, so far, uh, we are doing this because we love volleyball and we are doing this because we love the kids. This is for the kids. It's not for the money. Money is good, but it's not for the money. Uh, <clears throat> you want to exude confidence while appearing approachable and professional. One can communicate confident, confidence by holding uh, his or her, <coughs> uh, I can't see the last one. 
You have to keep, uh, keep your confidence by holding here, your, sh your shoulders back and your head up, okay? That way people will know you're about business. Keeping your head up while maintaining eye contact and holding your hands behind your back shows that you are in control without appearing arrogant and confrontational. Conf confrontational. There's a very thin line between arrogance and confidence. Uh, one should appear capable but approachable. And it's a very thin line. Uh, you know, a lot of us, we can, we, can, we can appear like we know it all. Yet, it's not how we are, but that's the perception that they have of you. You have to be uh, more, I guess, welcoming, a more, little more smile will help. Okay. Other quiet mess messages of self-confidence self include signaling sharply, maintaining eye contact, listening carefully and keeping your hand at your side. Smile when it's appropriate, but, but never frown or smirk. Practice a neutral facial expression that doesn't betray your emotion. I'm guilty of that. Uh, I am serious, but sometimes I smile, I smile a little too much. And people think they can take advantage of that until they realize, oh, I guess not, you know? So on my part, less smile works. So you're not done yet. Don't think that just because the game is over, your job as a professional is over, especially when they have fired, when we reach uh, uh, finals, uh, final stages where we have to uh, uh, communicate with our assigners about uh, uh, what happened to the game. Was there any issues? You know, is there like when you go sometime in some gyms, uh, you talk to the AD, you talk to the coaches. Sometimes you need that you need an 86 for whatever situation. So your job is not over after the game. You know, you want to talk uh, talk about a certain situation that happened in the game with your partner. On or off the court, people will continue to view you also as an official. So when the match is over, that's not an invitation to start scratching your armpits. Light up a cigarette, remove your shoes, and slump down on a nearby bench to air your feet. Your job begins when you receive an assignment and ends with the completed paperwork. Like it or not, people do judge, do judge books by their covers and officials by their appearance. You communicate a great deal about yourself and your abilities through your gestures, facial expressions, and how you, you dress and groom yourself. Okay, first impressions are visual and you can make them work for you. Take it a step further and learn what body language you're speaking so you can walk the line without fear or falling off of it. Work on maintaining composure, so important. Offering courtesy and stretching prof professionalism beyond the game. Okay, treat every game as though there's a television camera following you. Your every move and the importance of appearance will be second nature to you. Don't take any games lightly, whether it's a JV game, whether it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, a, a tournament game where you have a, a lopsided team, lopsided competition where a team is better than the other, you know. Treat every game with the same respect and you'll be great. So one take over, please, because that concludes our presentation. Well, Jeremy, if they have any, uh, I would suggest that everybody go back and look at those slides because those questions and answers, which gives the rulings, which went from A to J, that can help a lot of officials out, whether you are a veteran official or whether you're brand new. My thing is to offer Everyone, no matter what level or how many years you've been doing it, can learn something. So always ask questions and ask to see a, can you help me? Did you see anything that I did wrong? Or can you help out? And we all must do that after every game. That's the only way you're gonna learn. Thank you, gentlemen. That was uh, awesome stuff for, for all of our officials and hopefully very beneficial to uh, some of the newer ones that may be on this uh, uh, webinar uh, viewing tonight. Uh, we do have one question. It was uh, regarding the warm-up time. Uh, should you not begin pre-match at least 20 minutes 
uh, before to allow 15 minute warm up and then introduction if a school is doing this? Most of the time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask because some, 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 some schools might have ceremony they have to perform. So you want to try to get that out of the way if you can ask them to do the ceremonies prior to or if they want to do it in between by the rules where they got the time constraint in there. Technically, I'm starting at 20 minutes to call them together for the captains. Once we get through with the pregame, then I go ahead on and start the 7 7 and 1. If we finish up a little bit before, say the match is scheduled for 3 p.m. and we finish at 10 to 7 7 1, finished up at 2.58. I got two minutes left over to start before uh, to be relaxed for the three o'clock time frame. I can tell you, my partner Ron is ahead of time. When I, when I am with him, I am, I am calm because I know he's already there. He's got everything ready. Awesome. If there are any other questions, um, please feel free to throw them in the chat box or the Q&A box. Um, it is a little after seven already, so uh, don't want to take too much uh, more time of your Friday evening. So uh, if you have anything, please feel free to, to answer it uh, or ask it. And um, if not, we'll let you let everyone go and enjoy the rest of their Friday evening. Thank you, Jeremy. It was a pleasure. Thank you, Max. Thank you, Ronald. Appreciate you guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you for giving us the opportunity. And I want to also thank our commission, May Foley, for picking us to do this job. And one, last, one last thing before we head out uh, for everyone, I will post the actual um, PowerPoint presentation on the, the FHSA Central uh, Hub. So we'll have the webinar um, with Max and Ron uh, going through it uh, live and then the actual presentation. So if anybody wants to present just a presentation or anything uh, at one of your local meetings or look through it slide by slide uh, on your own time, you will be able uh, to do that as well. Um, so probably by midday tomorrow, I know it's a Saturday, but I, I'll get that up probably by midday, the latest uh, tomorrow. So uh, without further ado, uh, appreciate everyone for joining us. Again, thanks, Max, Ronald, and May for putting this together, and hope all of you stay safe. All right, you all right. too. Okay. Good night, guys. Thank you.